Hello, uh, we are about to start our second part uh, of uh, this morning session. Uh, my name is Milica Milojevic, uh, I'm assistant professor at the Faculty of Architecture, University of Belgrade. Uh, and um, I have a great pleasure to open this uh, session, welcoming Vito Oliveira, the Secretary General of the International Seminar on Urban Form and the President of the Portuguese Language Network of Urban Morphology. He is Principal Researcher at the Research Center for Territory Transports and Environment and Professor Oxford of Urban Morphology and Urban Planning at ULP. His research area are urban morphology, urban planning, architecture and cities. Today, he will give an overview of what urban morphology is and how it relates to professional practice in the built environment and what it offers to understand change. Uh, we are all facing the change in our everyday life, our community and our professional activities, and we think about adaptation, resilience and resistance deeper than before. So let's look how urban morphologist thinks on change today and sensate what kind of energy he brings to the field of urban morphology. Uh, please welcome Mr. Vito Oliveira. Uh, good morning. Thank welcome. you for... Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Um, I will share my screen. Okay. Uh, do you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think I can start. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, Professor Vladen for uh, the invitation to, to join you uh, today. It, it is a, a great pleasure for me. Um, I have seen the three last uh, presentations and I have enjoyed uh, very much. Uh, so today, uh, as the title says, um, I'm going to talk about uh, urban morphology and change. Uh, and I will do that uh, based on my experience on education and uh, research um, in, in the field of urban morphology. Um, and I do that, I, I teach um, students, mainly students of architecture, but uh, sometimes uh, students of planning and of, of geography. So I try to, to gather this uh, experience of uh, research and teaching in these uh, four books that I've published in, in the last five years with, uh, with Springer. So urban morphology is the field of knowledge that uh, studies the physical form of cities. And um, to do that, we, we start with, with a natural context in a way very similar to uh, the first uh, presentation uh, today uh, by my colleague, uh, Maria. Um, and we continue that by looking through at the spaces where we move through in urban areas. Uh, so we have a look at, at streets, at squares. Uh, we try to understand the different street blocks that uh, configure these uh, streets and, and squares, and to understand how they are divided into, into uh, different plots, plots of, of very different sizes and shapes, as you can see in this image that is just a small stretch of one street here in my city at uh, Porto. And we try to understand how this diversity of plots uh, influences uh, diversity of building footprints and, of course, of uh, building fabric. So we, we are especially interested in the ordinary common buildings. Um, I like very much one expression that uh, the first presenter, Maria, again, uh, has used. Uh, uh, she was looking at the architecture of the people. And I like to think that uh, we also uh, do it. 
Um, so we look at ordinary and at special uh, singular buildings also. Uh, but most important than, than these elements taken in isolation is the fact that we try to understand the physical form of cities through an understanding of how these different elements uh, are combined uh, in different ways in all over the planet. And we can see by, that just by this different com by this com combination in different patterns of streets, plots, and buildings, we have a huge diversity of urban landscapes. So I would say that um, my lessons for, for an architectural students, um, they represent a challenge to change from the design of extraordinary buildings to the analysis. And in the first moment is just analysis, uh, is not yet design to the analysis of all, all, all elements that make the physical form of cities. For a planning student, uh, on, on the other hand, uh, the challenge would be to recover a certain uh, common sense, a certain sense of uh, physical form uh, that is, is not very present in planning theory and planning uh, uh, research where issues such as discourse and negotiations and politics tend to be uh, more present. But urban morphology is about change. It is about processes of change. So in each specific setting, we need to understand what can be changed and what must be preserved. And uh, my colleagues have all uh, touched in this issue of heritage, of what to preserve. Perhaps um, uh, the second presentation by uh, Stefano has been the most explicit on that uh, topic, but we all uh, address this, uh, this thing of the balance between preservation, preservation and change. And we also have to understand what are the main drivers of, of change. So uh, how do we keep transforming our cities for instance, from this to this. And of course, here we have uh, a long time period of transformation. But if we move from to, to another uh, different context, uh, what are the changes that have framed this uh, urban landscape in New York, in Manhattan, in the Chelsea district, what has controlled, what has been controlled by the public initiative and what was left to the multiple individual decisions? Or more directly, what is the influence of this ground plan, this ground plan that was designed in 1811 and that uh, clearly established the avenues and streets, the street blocks and the plots? What is the influence of this ground plan in the Manhattan that we know uh, today? And what has changed in this ground plan in 200 years? What were the ideas or what were the main goals of the four men that have uh, designed this notable plan? So one, one major lesson in, in urban morphology is that for us to understand the present and have some ideas about the future, we have to understand the past. We have to understand the long history of um, getting together and live together in, in cities. So this is an, a history with almost uh, 6,000 uh, years. And um, we try to have a look uh, at the main changes and permanences that uh, have uh, taken place in this uh, six millennium of, of history. So when looking at each of these periods of um, our urban history, we try to understand uh, the things that we 
are studying in today's landscape. So how was a street in Irvine? Or uh, what was uh, the plot pattern that we had, for instance, in Dubrovnik? How are the buildings of the simple, ordinary buildings of Palmanova of, or of Novgrizaj? And uh, we get to today's um, very complex and dynamic setting uh, of, uh, of uh, our of the settlements that uh, uh, that we have uh, in uh, 2020 or 2021. So what we see here is um, first a very important thing: uh, more than half of us live in cities. Uh, we all know that, but uh, it's something that is very recent. Um, it has not been uh, like that until uh, uh, just some few years ago. Um, another thing that we can see here is that 23% of us lives in settlements that are smaller than 300,000 inhabitants. And on the other end of the spectrum, we see that almost one in each 10 persons lives in mega cities, in 36 mega cities, meaning cities that are uh, 10 million or, or more. And if you look at the map and at the red dots, uh, we see that more than half of these mega cities is located in Asia, six in China and six in India, which is uh, incredible and again, a very recent uh, fact. Uh, so when we look at all this, we, we, we see that we have um, our object, the city, uh, has it's very complex and very dynamic. When you think of mega cities, uh, in 1950, we had only two. It was just New York and, and Tokyo. So urban morphology as a field of knowledge started to be developed in the late 19th century in Central Europe and within urban geography. Um, with the rise of, of the Nazi party in, um, in Germany, the core of this morphological approach moves from Germany to the UK. Um, in the mid 20th century, it was based in Newcastle upon time. And, and after the 70s, it was clearly centered in Birmingham. What does this approach give to us researchers and practitioners? Um, it aims at offering a detailed reading of the elements of urban form and of how they change over time. And that is uh, very important. Um, it makes evident that some elements are more resistant to change than others. Streets are very difficult to change, while on the other hand, uses are apparently easy to, uh, to, to be transformed. It also demonstrates that a correct understanding of the built environment depends on our ability to work at different scales simultaneously. So this is a map by uh, Jeremy Whitehand. Um, it's a map of Newcastle. And what we see here is that he is trying to understand the metropolitan dynamics of Newcastle. And at the same time, he's trying to understand what happens what are the changes that take place in each of these plots? One of the concepts that has more potential for application in planning practice is uh, the concept of morphological region, meaning an area of uh, a great homogeneous in terms of the main elements of urban form. And um, this concept has a particular method to, um, to be uh, developed, made of um, standardized, uh, let's call it like that, uh, steps. And this makes it 
applicable by any practitioner. And as such, it can be an alternative to traditional zoning based on uses that are uh, applied in practice everywhere. So here we have a division into different parts. So it's all, all also zoning, but this a zoning based on forms. Each of these areas is delimited by uh, the cohesion, the coherence in terms of urban form and the regulations for the transformation of these urban forms over time is deeply related to uh, the physical landscape and to the social landscape. So in the first decades of the 20th century, uh, a new morphological approach started to be developed in Italy in architecture. And uh, while it was mainly based in, in Rome for several decades, after the 70s, it started to be spread all over Italy and a bit uh, around Europe. Um, it shares with the former the focus on history and uh, to a certain extent also a, a focus on, on the building fabric. Um, one of the most useful concepts for practice on the built environment is the idea of a typological process. Um, we all have seen building types. Uh, in fact, uh, again, the first presenter today, Maria, has shown us some building types. And the idea here would be to collect the building types of a certain territory and to place them into a timeline. And in this timeline, each building type would be um, part of a, 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 se a sequence that uh, takes place over time. So one type, one building type is the result of transformations in the former building type. And it contains in itself the basis for future transformations. So this idea is quite powerful for research, but it is even more interesting for practice. So if, if you look at the lower part of the slide, uh, you see a reading of transformations in Genoa. And what you see here, uh, it's a project uh, that is strongly determined by uh, this uh, reading of how ordinary buildings have been transformed in time in this Italian city. Uh, both the analysis and the project are uh, by Gianfranco Canigia. Well, in, in the 70s, a new morphological approach started to be developed in London, in the UK. Um, it was developed by architects, not only, but by architects, as in the former case. But um, it is much more quantitative uh, than um, the approach developed by uh, the Italian architects. Uh, here, the focus is on the relation between space and society. At, uh, at the urban scale, the core of this approach is in streets, in how streets are organized within a city like London, Beijing, Tokyo, Brazil, um, and how this organization of streets enables or disables movement, enables or uh, disables integration. So uh, what we look here in this, uh, what we see here in these four maps is um, a, the pattern of integration and segregation of the different parts that make this, uh, these four cities. 
Contrarily to the two former approaches, uh, history is not a key issue for, uh, for space syntax, but the future is. So one of the possibilities that this approach give us is after building these models, which are models of the present situation, uh, we can um, calculate what would be the impact of the design of new streets. Or in a more detailed look, what would be the impact of changes in some particular uh, public spaces? For instance, here, this is uh, one of the first iconic projects of this approach is the redesign of Trafalgar Square, um, which was done together with Norman Foster. And what is here at, at SAIC is uh, looking at the pattern of movement uh, and redesign the, uh, the public space of Trafalgar Square by doing changes in the space that is for pedestrians and the space that is for cars. And within the space for pedestrians, try to make slight changes that would have a, um, a sound impact. For instance, changing the place of a staircase. So to conclude, because I'm getting very near uh, the 20 minutes, this is just, um, these are just two tables or two parts of the same table um, of how do I organize these contents uh, in my in my lessons of urban morphology, first focusing on the city itself, and then on the way how we researchers uh, look at cities and on how some of these theories, concepts, and methods are applied in planning practice and in uh, architectural practice. So I would just like to conclude with this um, paragraph uh, that is uh, taken from, from my book, from the first of those four books that I show you in the first slide, and it, it is the core of my uh, teaching course. So this is a course on cities, on their physical form, and on, on how we, urban morphologists and practitioners, describe, explain, and act on this physical form. It is also an invitation to a number of fabulous books that have been published um, in this century of, uh, of life of, of this uh, field of knowledge. But more important than that is it's an invitation to students to contribute to make his or her city uh, a better city and to visit and enjoy other cities in different parts of the world. So if you want, it is an analogy to diversity, to the diversity of places and to the diversity of, um, of people. So thank you for your attention and I will stop sharing.